Oh, come on. This sounds like it's just another pointless story. So I bought my first Xbox 360 when I was in high school. I think I was 16. And I loved it. I loved the transition from like little kid games, I guess, into like shooters and more serious gaming. I say that like I'm a hardcore gamer and I'm not. But I played games all through high school and I really enjoyed Call of Duty, Halo, the standard stuff. When I was 18, I had a friend who decided to join the army. And for whatever reason, when he enlisted, he decided that he was gonna get rid of like all of his stuff. Which I don't get, but I was also like, okay. And he ended up giving me his entire collection of Xbox 360 games. Which was rad, because that really is what introduced me to the world outside of shooters within the Xbox 360. Before then, I really liked action-adventure games, I had just never really branched out. And included in the games that he gave me were such masterpieces as The Elder Scrolls Oblivion, Red Dead Redemption, Mass Effect, Fallout 3. Oh. Borderlands! Borderlands was another one! And what ended up being my personal favorite, the orange box. Most of you know how much I love Portal. I love Portal. But I'm not sure if you know how much I also love Half-Life. The orange box has Half-Life 2, as well as Part 1 and Part 2. <laughs> it does include the full Half-Life game, as well as Episode 1. This is actually the game he gave me. This is... I still have it. So because of the orange box that he gave me, I was introduced to two of my favorite games of all time. And I hold to that. I mean, there's obviously competitors, but I had never had any experience with any of these games before. I'd never had any experience with Valve or Half-Life. I'd never played the original one. So I dove right into Half-Life 2 and it scared the crap out of me. Seriously, it still scares me. I tried to do a playthrough of it like three years ago and I honestly got too scared. <laughs> And so I never finished it. But I absolutely devoured the game. Absolutely devoured it. I loved Alex. I loved the gravity gun. I loved Gordon Freeman's glasses. And it was just the coolest game ever. So what happened is I beat Half-Life 2. I beat Episode 1. I beat Episode 2. And the game was over. But everybody knows the game's not over. I searched tirelessly for Half-Life 3. I spent hours googling Half-Life 3 and could find nothing. And then the heartbreak started to set in. And I was kind of crushed. I had just finished this incredible game with these characters that I had grown to love. With this cliffhanger that I had no idea what to do with. And there was no resolution. Even by the time I got it, the game had been out for years. The Orange Box came out in 2007. I obtained it in probably 2010. So in my mind, I was at least expecting an announcement, a hint, a trailer, a release date, anything. There was nothing, nothing. And the only thing that I found that was semi-concrete was a post in a forum about Half-Life 3 and how Valve was incapable of counting to three. I remember just, uh, and it just hurt, and it still hurts. And I'm like all on board with the Half-Life 3 confirmed memes because I agree now. I'm bitter and hopeless and I don't think Valve can count to three. And that is the story of my tragic realization that Half-Life has no conclusion. This story that was such a part of me has no ending. And it just sucks. And it still sucks. And I just, I wanted to share my pain with you in the form of a pointless story because that's kind of what it is. So, until next time, Gamer Meg, Half-Life 3. Half-Life 3 confirmed. Stay sweet and keep your chin up. Chin up, Willy. They'll come. Now I'm all reflective and sad. Focus on me. Focus on me. Focus on me. Focus on me. There we go.